Good afternoon, Year 6, and welcome to this week's art lesson. So I thought I'd continue on with the learning we were doing in our topic lessons all about the ancient Maya. And I found some really cool activities based around creating some of their very famous masks. Um, so I'm not going to show you any for the minute. We're going to talk a bit about why the masks were important in Maya culture and what they were used for. And I'm going to show you some we're going to think about um, what's special about them, the type of materials they might have used, the designs, the colours, and that way you can design your best mask at the end of the session. So why were masks so important to the Maya culture? So masks were seen throughout Maya culture and they served many different purposes. So they weren't just used in one particular era of the Maya culture, they were used over many thousands of years across the ancient Maya civilization. Many Maya masks were in the image of an animal. This is because the Maya believed that animals held the spirit of the gods within them. They would create masks in their likeness to demonstrate their worship to the gods. So as we know from our last topic lesson that the Mayas worshipped many different gods and a lot of them had animal-like features or were in the form of an animal. So the Mayas reproduced that in their own masks to show their worship and devotion to those different gods that they were worshipping at the time. And obviously we've spoken about some of the gods and why they would have worshipped different gods at different times. For example, some Maya people believe the jaguar provided strength and power to a king. They would decorate masks with animal-like teeth and spots to demonstrate their devotion to the king during festivals and rituals. So not only were they using masks to worship the gods, but they were also using them to demonstrate their commitment and devotion to whoever their king was at the time. And um, as I said here, the jaguar was seen as an animal of strength. And he actually appears, the jaguar appears quite a lot in the gods that we know from our last lesson. So they believe that the this jaguar animal, the spirit of the gods within them, was keeping protection over their kings and giving power to their kings. So they would wear these jaguar masks to show that they supported their king and they wanted to offer their strength as well. Okay, and these masks were worn at celebrations and religious rituals. And they're bright in colours, you can see from the example on the screen, and featured intricate designs. They weren't, they weren't plain, they were very, very well detailed. The masks were also created for the rich and important when they died. Not quite so happy and cele celebratory. It was believed the masks would protect the wearer on their journey to the underworld. As we know from our last lesson, the Maya believed that after you died, you journeyed to the underworld. I wonder if you can remember how they believed you got there. And that was through waterways, through caves and caverns. And they believed that these masks would protect the wearer on their journey to the underworld. One of the most famous Maya death masks that was ever, was ever found, ever recovered, was of King Pakal. And he ruled his city of Palenque, I believe, for over 68 years. Now, we know that many thousands of years ago, people didn't live as long as we did. They didn't have the medicines to keep them alive and healthy as we did. So someone who ruled for over 68 years is quite an important guy. And they also... Um, seem to think from some inscriptions they found in his temple that um, the city he ruled over became quite wealthy during his reign. So he was really respected as a Maya king. His mask was handmade. All the masks were handmade, obviously. They didn't have the tools that we have today to reproduce things quickly. Out of a precious stone called jade, which is this green colour you can see on the screen. And jade, they believe, symbolised the soul and the purity of the soul. So they believe that he had a good soul and therefore he needed to reflect that in his mask. Okay, and death masks, slightly different to the celebratory mask we talked about, were made in the likeness of the wearer. Okay, so we've got a good idea of what his face and his features would have been like from this mask that we can see here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you several different examples of Maya masks, ancient Maya masks. And I want you to be thinking about these four questions as we are looking at them. We're going to first think about what animal does this mask remind you of what animals do you think they might have been trying to portray? Because obviously we're not going to have your typical cats and dogs that we'd have at home in England here. These would be very exotic animals they would have found in the jungles around them. Okay. Do you think it's a celebration mask or a death mask? Remember, we just talked about death masks were made in the likeness of a person. So if they're more human looking, they're probably more likely to be a death mask. Um, and think about what part of the mask do you most enjoy? And what design elements do you like that you might want to then use later on when you come to make your own? So here's our first mask. You can also see it's quite brightly coloured. And that's something to really note about their celebratory masks. They were very brightly coloured. They weren't dull. And even though they would have been made out of wood and clay, they, they decorated them 
and historians believe they use sort of berries and other things they would have found in the jungle to paint to to create sort of a basic paint okay and what we want to do is we're looking through these masks i want you to think about the shape and the direction of the features of the face, the nose, the mouth, and the eyes. So there's something quite similar between all of the masks about them. There's a certain expression you won't see on any of the masks. It's one that we need to make sure that we can stay away from when we design ours. So here we can see this is obviously representing an animal because we can see the open animal's um, mouth here with um, sharp teeth. Now this makes me think of a big cat of sorts. It could have been a jaguar, a puma, something like that, um, that would have been found again, in those parts of the world at that time. Okay, let's move on to the next one. If at any point you want to pause, have a longer look and think about those four questions, then please do. Um, I'm just gonna keep going through, but you can pause at any point you want to. So this one, now see my first question was, what animal do you think is being represented in this mask? Can't actually see any animals in this one. So that would make me think that this was most likely to have been used for a Deaf mask, okay? Now we can see here that we've got bright patterns and colors still. Obviously these ones have been faded slightly. Um, some of the pictures of these masks aren't original artifacts from the Mayan times. They've been reproduced by people more recently to represent what they believe they would have looked like, okay? And again, once you look at the features of the face, the nose, the eyes, and the mouth, and also I want you to think about what's around the ears. See if as we move along, if you see anything special about what's around the ears. Okay, here's another one. So this one's obviously quite clear what animal they're representing here, some form of lizard. I want to say an iguana, but if you think you know better, then please do let me know. And again, those features of the face, the eyes and the mouth, there is one expression we have not seen yet on any of these masks, and then we are unlikely to. Now this one, hasn't actually got any animals on it. It's actually got what appears to be some form of temple coming out of the headdress, okay? So well, this might have belonged to a king or a priest, someone high up in the religion who would have worked in the temples at the time. And we could possibly think this might have been a death mask because of the fact that we can't see any animals portrayed and it is representative of someone's face. Okay, let's look at the next one. So again, lots of bright colours here. Now, at first glance, you might think this mask is smiling, but if we look more closely at the mouth, you can see that isn't an upturned smile face. Again, that's more of that serious face that we've sort of mouth that we've seen on a lot of the masks. Um, and again, this animal is portrayed here, but it's portrayed in a slightly different way. So instead of the mask being the whole of the animal, it's just got a small emblem to the animal on the top there. I think what we can see from a lot of these masks as well is that the mask doesn't just stop at sort of the top of the forehead, the hairline, they go up much larger in scale. So that's again, something you'll want to think about. Okay, we've got another one here. Again, that big headdress we were just talking about. And again, no particular animals. Um, again, we've got some markings here on the cheeks that could look like the top of peacock feathers, but I don't believe peacocks were around this part of the world at that time. They were all found in the Middle East. So it's more likely just to be some form of marking or pattern. Again, that big headdress and quite a human looking mask. So again, this would most likely have been a death mask worn by someone on their way to the underworld. So let's look at one in more detail. I've picked this one because I really liked the colors of this one. So I've got some questions on the screen that I'd like you to think about. So if you can pause the video and think about those, and then I'll come back and I'll discuss my ideas as well. So again, we can look at the colors here, quite bright and vibrant. So we've definitely got those bright oranges and reds and yellows here. Um, I think we've seen from all the masks that we've looked at that bright colors were definitely what they used. Um, Notice about the shape of the mouths and none of them are smiling. I wonder if you picked up on that yet. That was what I was trying to get to. None of the masks are smiling. They're they this open, um, this sort of open expression or sort of like an upside down D or like this one here, mouths aren't open at all. Very straight, very plain to give any emotion away. So although they're happy and bright in their colorings and patterns, the actual facial features weren't too happy, let's say, or smiling. 
And I've also noticed in a lot of them as well, the nose is quite elongated, definitely comes from above the eyes down to almost touching the nose, the, the mouth and the nose touching quite a lot of these masks. So you guys right above the mouth there. And again, from above the eyes, again, right above the eyes there, slightly above the mouth, but again, quite elongated. So those features are definitely exaggerated. Um, what animal do we think this mask represents? Now, I would say this represents, again, some form of big cat, um, a jaguar, a puma. I'm trying to think what would have been found in Central America at the time. We'll have to do some research together, maybe in our next session, and, work and find out what animals have been around. But we know it's some form of big cat. We can tell that by its teeth and the pattern. Okay. And the animals drawn side on. Okay. So we had a mask right at the beginning that was representing an animal, this one here, and it was almost as if the person's head was inside the mouth of the animal. That was quite um, regular in these masks. But also, if that wasn't the style, if the mask wasn't appearing from inside the actual mouth of the beast, then they would have a small emblem of the animal facing in one direction, side on view. Okay. And has anyone noticed anything special about the ears yet? I'll do a quick flick through, look at the ears in all of these masks. Okay, so out of the mask that we can see, where we can see the ears, they've got these big hoops, okay? Most likely earrings, and they would have been worn by males and females, okay? Because they've all got these big hoop earrings. And you can't really see a definitive ear shape. They're quite sort of geometrical. They use straight lines rather than trying to do an actual human feature of an ear. So thinking then about how we want to portray the animals in our masks, I was thinking the best way probably is to, again, use an emblem. So I found some pictures of um, different emblems of animals from Maya times. And what I like to do is pause the video and have a go at sketching some of these animals, the side on view of animals into your books that you can draw upon later when we come to make your masks. Um, so we have got a human head there as well. Don't need to worry about doing that. But any of these animals. And also it might be just a bit of fun activity. See if you can try and work out what these different animals are meant to be representing. I think this one here is a, some form of crocodile. And also we've got a few birds. And some could be made up animals that they believed in at the time. So if you pause the video now and have a go at drawing those for me. Okay. So hopefully you've had a go at drawing those. Ready to put them on your mask a bit later. So that is going to be your main task for today is designing your own Maya mask. Now, there are a template in the booklet if you want to print that off or you can have a go at drawing one or you can have a go if you, re if you really want to challenge yourself at just drawing one um, from scratch. OK, and I'm going to get rid of these bits because this is for the children in school and you can have a go at having drawing one now with you. So, so you want to think about the key shapes that we've seen throughout these masks. And we've already talked about the features of the face, the elongated nose and the big mouth that isn't smiling. So let's have a go at drawing that. So we've said before, obviously, the nose, they're normally quite triangular in shape. If you look back at some of the pictures and they go from above the eyes in the middle of the forehead down to almost the nose. So I'm going to have a go at doing one like that myself. Oh, no, I want a pen to draw. There we go. Nice, sharp, geometrical shape. Okay, and then we have sort of, a, they have a large mouth, don't they, that aren't often looking happy. Now, I think that one looks happy, so I'm gonna get rid of that mouth and have a go at drawing a different, I said an upside down D earlier, didn't I? So let's do an upside down D. Yes, that's much more like it. And then if we look back at a couple of the other masks, you can see there's quite sort of like a large ridge around the mouths to really emphasize where they are. So let's draw that around the mouth, so extra space. Like so, to really show off where the mouth is. And quite a lot of them have the nose split. So I'm gonna draw a line down there, okay? Now the next feature I wanna think about is those big hoops we've seen in quite a lot of them. So I'm gonna draw them just off to the side of my mask. And then let's have a look back at a couple of the, obviously how they're connected. So here again, we've got those straight triangular shapes. 
That one's tucked in the headdress. Okay, I'm going to try and copy the style of this one, I think. So we're going to have sort of coming up again from above the eyes, straight down. I might do sort of a spiral pattern here because some of them have more decorative features than just the shapes we can see. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this down slightly. So I've got some room because as we've said, a lot of them have large headdresses on. Let's go back and remind ourselves. So his is quite similar to the rest of his mask and pointing upwards. Um, all quite patterned and decorated. I really like the temple one. But I'm not going to go drawing that one right now. Maybe, maybe one like this, ignoring the animal part, one that just goes straight up. So let's have a go at that one. I'm going to draw my basic shape of a headdress and split it into sections. There we go. Now, I think the eyes on this template are a bit too human. So again, I'm going to make them a bit more square square what we're talking about triangular like the other masks oh, it looks really scary now okay so you can see how i thought about each feature of the mask individually and tried to pull it together it's my own interpretation of a maya mask now there's one particular thing that i haven't done yet and that is the animal emblem now as i'm just drawing on my laptop screen i'm not going to have a go at that because i don't think i'll get the detail through on the screen and it will lag but that's one of the main things you want to make sure you include is leaving a space for that emblem so i might rub out a little bit of these lines here and i'd use that space to draw one of my animal emblems on the top of my headdress and then if i had the um resources at home if you've got the resources at home to color them in that would be absolutely brilliant and i know myself and your teachers would really like to see them so please do share them once you've done them so hopefully that's given you um, some ideas of how you can approach making, designing your mask. As I said, we'd really love to see them. So please do get them um, to us as soon as you can. And hopefully you enjoy making your Maya mask. So take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you next time for your next art lesson.